Yeah, yeah, this is million dollars worth of game. Me, I go me, by me, the me, name me, 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 million dollars worth of, of game. Gilly the King. I'm Wallow267, a.k.a. the Grandmaster of the World. The Grandmaster of life. nut-ass niggas. Dojo's coming soon. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you always got to be, you know, you know what? You know what? We're going to talk about, you know, updating your work. But I'm, before I get in there, I want to shout out to our sponsors, everything, DivaGlam.com. Have you had any good hair lately? That's what I want to know. Me, I haven't. I have not an uh you know, Gil, I think we could do some Beijing with you. We make it turn you to the Beijing King. No, not at all. Get you, you know. We can turn you in a lace front low. No, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. That'll fit you. We're not doing that. Then you can have a ponytail like Karate Earl, nigga. You can have a bootleg. No, 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 I ain't going to front. I did you have a ponytail. bootleg ponytail like yeah, well, Karate Earl. <laughs> KKE, man. Yeah, I did want, a, I did want one of them because he did have a ponytail. He was a legend. But I talked to Brookie. She said he always used to have uh, do-rags on his biscuit. He was too. a legend. He was a legend. That's what's, yeah. that's what's so great about Earl. Like, Earl Earl was just like, man, he was a... Uh, and for the record, his mama vouched for Earl. Everybody vouched for Earl. His everybody, mama said... Everybody in the neighborhood vouched for Earl. They also said he was crazy. They did say that. He was mental. He was getting two checks, one from the government and an SSI pub. Like, 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 I talked to my mom off the record. And she, he was she, spending that SSI pub on I talked, to my mom, and pussy. I talked, listen, listen. We already confirmed that. We confirmed that. No, 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 I knew I I basically showed that my mom she was in a role due to the like, fact that he was tricking. No, 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 he no, no, no. Tricking. That was her excuse for not dealing with Earl because she should have been dating Earl. She should have dated Earl. <laughs> and that would have been my step pop and I'd have been major. I told her that. <laughs> hey, listen. You should have just dated Earl. She wouldn't be running around messing with uh, the boy uh, Wave Cap Gary, the boy that was first. T- no, no, boy, his name was Wave Cap Gary. This is the first boy. <laughs> so he was WCG. <laughs> yeah, this is the first boy. She scared me. This is the first time I seen a Wave Cap. I go in the bathroom. She she got his Wave Cap hanging from the shower joint. She drying. So hold on. Was hold it on. a two tone? Was it no? A it was a regular joint. It was oh, a black okay. joint. Black on black. On. She was. So she, you mean Wave Cap Gary was goddamn. Blitzing, goddamn, goddamn, I'm Jackie. It would have been different. Listen, it would have been different. You listen, came in. I'm going to say this. Did I'm you come this. in when Wave Cap Gary was no, blitzing? No, 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 no. I didn't come in when he was like blitzing. Like how, how you say Jack caught you jerking off the one time. Did <laughs> no, you I never go came in when Wave Cap but Gary But I know, was I know he was doing something because she was washing his Wave Caps, had him hanging from the shower joint. Oh, wow. Because hey, I didn't know what it was. I hey, said, oh, what's going hey, on? Hey, hold on. What a, what a, what a woman wash your Wave, wave Caps. Good deal. You know what I'm saying? He put that work in. Good deal. Now, it would have been different. Like me, I listen, and I didn't like him. I didn't like Gary. I I never liked Gary. We always why you ain't like WCG. No, we was always beefing, right? We was all why? Because because he was because he, he was blitzing your mom like it was four foot inches ball. <laughs> no, no, he tried. Line. No, he tried to big hand me one day. That's why I ain't like him. Now, now I'm gonna say this. I wouldn't he mind tried to big hand you. Yeah, yeah. What the fuck that mean? Like slap me up one day. Wait, hold on, oh, hold on, wait. He tried to slap on, me on, one day. Hold on. hold on. So you mean to tell me that a nigga that just came into your life because he was because he was. Sacking your mom. That was my step pop. Like, he, he was, was step pop. Anybody no, that's blazing no, your no, mom no, no, is your step no, pop. No, no, that's not. <laughs> yes, it about. is. That's your step pop. Because you talking about. That's your step pop. You know every nigga that's blazing your mom. Anybody that blazes your mom is your step pop. No, that's not the truth. Fuck out listen, of here. Once somebody blazes your mom, so once somebody blazes your mom, just came into the household, you accepted him as your step pop. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm just saying if somebody blazes your mom, they your step pop. By default, you saying that. By default, they your step pop. No, not. Anybody that blazes your mom is your step pop. No, 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 no. Because you talking about your no, no, that's your step pop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so you mean to tell me niggas that came into the crib that was that was cooking Jackie beans? You called them pop? I didn't call them pop, but I'm saying step dad. dad. I didn't. I didn't only so person, you had step dad Gary. Listen, listen, How many step daddies you had growing listen, the fuck listen, up? Listen, you nut ass nigga. Listen, <laughs> fuck is wrong. I only had one step pop. That was John. That him and my mom was together forever. Listen. And my dad wasn't around. It ain't like my dad was around. If my dad wasn't around, he would have just been my fucking mom boyfriend. All right, now, now, I want to just like, say this. I want to say Hip was my- My dad wasn't listen, around. Listen, so, so you had Hip? Hip was my Gary, step-pop. No, 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 no. who no, else? No, 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 no. You no, wanted no. Karate Earl? By default, this by nigga default. Had, this nigga had default, multiple step-pops. By default. He had a whole fucking handful of step-pops. <laughs> I, I did some research. I did some research. I talked to somebody down my way. My mom was sweating Earl. So Earl possibly was my stepdad. She was sweating him. So you had so she was attracted okay, to Earl. So so how many step pops did you have growing up? I I don't know. Hold on, did he Melvin you like choke you up like baby boy? No 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 he didn't do that. Gary wave cap Gary didn't do that, but he tried to slap me one day on the steps. I pee. I remember that. And why, what what did you do? I didn't do nothing. I retreated. You, you were not ass nigga. I ran. <laughs> you were not ass. Nigga. I had to. I ran. 
<laughs> See, I ain't never had those problems. I ran, but I'm telling you right now, I'm like, like. So on some Jack was allowing niggas to come in and just discipline you like that. No, Jack ain't know what happened. I ain't even tell her. I ain't want to bring that to her because I was, I was focusing on some other stuff. I was out there getting mean in the, in the mean okay, streets. Okay, no, no. Before we get into the million dollars worth of game, whole segment, I want. Why did WCG slap you? No, no, no. He tried to slap me, and I ducked it. I ducked. And it. then you ran. He tried to slap. But me. what did he try to slap you for? I, I said some crazy stuff to him. Was he in the kitchen, like naked cooking? No, no, he, cooking was, eggs he was on the steps. Shit. We was the steps. We lived up nice town. We was on the steps, seventeen wing hockey. He tried to big hand me, right? I, I and I and I and I retreated. Did I ran you, down the block to you, the park. Why you ain't activate your, your feet? No, no. At that time, I, at that time, because WCG, sure. because WCG would have picked him up, dumped him on his fucking head, knocked all the seeds out his but, watermelon. But, but that's why the, he activated but, 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 his feet. Let, man, let's get to no, this no, no. I just want to say one more game, thing. Man. I want to say one more thing, though. I want to say one more thing. Like, like, in a perfect world. Earl would have been my stepdad. He'd this have been ain't my stepdad. a perfect world, nigga. He'd have yeah, been my stepdad. This ain't a perfect do you, do, world. Listen, do you know how? Do you know how I would have felt to literally come <laughs> inside the kitchen in the morning, Earl? Another ass nigga no, 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 with, Earl, a, with a hold on. With Earl got his gi pants on. He got his gi pants on. No shirt. No draws. Let's no, no, get it right. Whoa, 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 no draws. Keep it because he whoa. told you a real warrior battles in the raw. Whoa, 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 whoa. So you'd have came whoa. in. You'd have, you'd have peeked in your mama's room. He had been in there with a gi on, no draws, with no, your no, mom no. in a cobra clutch. No, no. Do you do you know how good I would have felt if I'd have been able to walk in, in the kitchen early in the morning, Earl in there? And see a nigga with a bootleg ponytail no, no, and no, a no. gi with no draws. Earl with a ponytail. That would have made you feel good. And I just come in. Good morning, sensei. Sit down, student. <laughs> He'd be right there talking to Do you know what type of wisdom I'd have been able to get every morning? <laughs> yeah, you know what type of shit is that? You would have been a legendary nut ass nigga. Earl was hey, a legend. let's get into this motherfucking me and I. The first thing I want to talk about is passing the baton. But, oh, excuse me, uh, you never you never did Olympics in school. You when you played basketball, I did. I did. But what I'm talking, talking about has nothing baton, to like, do with race. What I'm talking about. What are you is, talking about race? I'm talking about. I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not talking about rappers. your color, of your skin. I'm talking about you wasn't running in school. So to how you want to talk about passing rappers. the baton? Like where did that come from? What where, where was the origins of you talking oh, about can passing you shut the baton? The fuck up, I'm just asking. Bro. Like, come on, man. God damn. I'm just asking. Goofy is what Goofy does. You talking about race? Oh, I don't damn, care about the color. You, you know, already know he, he, you know, he, he, S R slightly fucking <laughs> retarded. It's all cool though, right? Yeah, Listen okay. to now all these runner. rappers, <laughs> track star, that retreat. God bless you to get the light shine doing you in whatever city you went: Chicago, Milwaukee, Miami, Philadelphia, New Orleans, whatever city you went. When God bless you to get the light shined on you, and you in the front, you leading a race in your city. Why niggas don't always reach down and pull niggas up? Why why motherfuckers don't reach down and pull niggas out the How you? But I'm just saying. Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I? Can I just say, ask you something? Can I ask you something? How the fuck they gonna do that? If the light shine on them. That mean the police is kicking their ass. If they shine a the light on, they in the car. How the fuck they going to do something to somebody? Listen, man. Goofy is what Goofy does, man. I'm talking about some serious shit now, bro. If you want to just keep jumping in with super goofy fucking shit, man. Can you just can, can I just talk you said for, the light shine talk for, Go ahead, talk, this, man. This is, a, this is something that's really on my mind, man. Go ahead and talk, man. I'm All just right, saying, cool. if, if, if the light is but shining cool. on me, that means I got pulled over. Pull over. Where's your? Let me just say this for the record. If you are artist and God gave you the light, he shined the light on you. He gave you the opportunity to be leading a race in your city. And you don't reach down and pull a nigga out the water. You a nut ass nigga. You hear me? If you don't reach down and pull somebody who was in your position at one time trying to get out that water, you don't reach down and you don't pull them out the water, you a nut ass nigga, man. And let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Shout out to a nigga like Rick Ross. Rick Ross got the light shined on him. He reached down. He pulled Meek Mills out the water. He pulled Wale out the water. He pulled Gunplay out the water. Shout out to a nigga like 50 Cent. The light was shined on him. He reached down. He pulled Young Buck out the water. He pulled uh, Lloyd Banks out the water. Even a nigga like DJ Khaled. He pulled Ace Hood out the water. Even a nigga like DJ Drama. He pulled Lil Uzi out the water. Now, granted, Uzi feel like he ain't getting what he deserved. He might, but Uzi got eleven fucking cars. Cars don't mean you got money. But 
but that means you're doing better than what the fuck you was doing. I got it. I got because let me because because if you got a Bentley, a Phantom, a motherfucking Audi, a motherfucking uh, and, and eight other motherfucking designer cars, then that means you're doing better than what the fuck you was doing. What you, mean, my what, you, point. what you mean? What you can, was doing? Can, can you can you please just please, bro? Please, can you just please not be a nut ass nigga for five minutes, bro? Please, I, I got. I'm, I'm really trying to get this off my motherfucking chest. Man. Well, get it off your chest. You got a lot of motherfuckers who get that light shined on them, and then they become selfish motherfuckers. See, I'm a nigga that truly believe if you at the top of the ladder, it you can't go no higher, right? So if you reach down and you pulling motherfuckers up, when you take a step down on the ladder, what do the person that you pulling up do? They take a step up, right? So you still always connected to the fucking top. But you got niggas who get the light shined on them and they insecurities take over because niggas is insecure with themselves. They take the mind frame of, I'm going to let these niggas starve. Fuck that. I ain't helping nobody. Somebody helped you. Who you help? Who I didn't help. Who the fuck came out of the city of Philadelphia who I didn't help? What you mean by help? Any way I could help them. Getting them to the radio. Because I'm the nigga who had all the motherfucking connects. How many niggas am I responsible for for getting on the radio? If you name them, nigga, I helped them. You name them. I ain't got to name them. I just said if you name them, then I fucking helped them. So if you got any fucking names of any nigga from Philadelphia that you want to shot the fuck out, if you named them, then more than likely I fucking helped them. So at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, if God bless you, man, to be winning the race, man, pull somebody else in the race, man. Help somebody else feed their fucking mother, feed their father, feed their cousins, feed their brothers, feed their aunts. Feed the niggas that's around them that's trying to live the American dream. But what about the mentality of I don't own nobody nothing? Let me tell you something. Only bitch ass niggas take that mentality. I don't owe nobody nothing. Only insecure niggas take that mentality. I don't owe no fucking body nothing. Okay, let me ask you a question. Nobody didn't get there on they self. Nobody didn't get there by their fucking self. So that means the motherfucker that helped you didn't take the mentality of I don't owe nobody nothing. They took the mentality of, I see a nigga that got talent. I'm able to help you process and get through the doors that you need to get through. So I'm going to help you get through them fucking doors. So if you get, if a motherfucker helped you get through the doors, and then you get here and you lock the doors on everybody else, you's a nut ass nigga, man. You forgot Gotti. Shout out to Yo Gotti. You forgot T.I. Shout out to T.I. You forgot uh Baby. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, fuck that. Let me tell you something. Let me let me tell you something. Oh. Baby came in the game with all them niggas together. He did he didn't get the light shined on him, and then and then he came in the game with all them niggas together. Juvenile, Wayne, BG. But you said changed my life. No, 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 no. No, they changed each other's lives together. The niggas that I'm talking about is they specifically had the light on them and then went and shined the light on somebody else. Not some niggas we all came in the game together. I can't say, oh, I'm, I'm responsible for shining a light on major figures. No, because we all came in the game together. We all did that collectively. But once I got in the game, it was young niggas that was up and coming that I said, you know what, youngin? All you need is this. Hold on, let me introduce you to this person. Okay, hold on. Let me introduce you to this person. Because at the end of the day, if 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 you got the light shined on you and you're not willing to help a motherfucker that come from the same bottom that you come from, you a bitch ass nigga, man. If so you got to ask yourself, if you lead in the race, and I ask you, damn, dog, you lead in the race right now. You right here at the top. Whose success are you responsible for? Because that's the, that's the true meaning of, of leaving a legacy out here. It ain't what the fuck you done for yourself. It's what you done for yourself and what you done for other motherfuckers. So if I ask you, if you lead in the race, and I ask you, who you responsible for? 
Whose success are you responsible for? And you ain't got no answers. You a bitch ass nigga. Now, one of the reasons that Gil come you up a with hoe this, ass nigga. Uh, speaking about this, I, I I think this 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 is this is birth from the DMs. Million dollars worth of game DMs. Wallow two six seven DMs. Gilly the King DMs. Where you got these young cats from all across the country that's that's coming out of different sets. And some of these sets, they got people that's on. And uh, you know, the stories that's in there, man, I try to get with such and such. They wouldn't they I try to get with such and such, they even blocked me or they didn't give me the play. So it's like, this is where this is coming from. It's like, you got people all around the country that's making it happen. You know, people got the approach, I don't owe nobody, fuck, you know, fuck everybody. You know, that's the mentality of it. And you a bitch ass nigga. But it's like, if that's your approach, you're a bitch ass nigga. And it's not just anybody, because some of these guys got real talent. You know, because right. we in a game where everybody rap. We understand you can't take care of it. Nobody can take care of everybody. But some of these guys, you, you would see them in the DM, like, damn, dude, got some real, he from where? And you'll look and you'll see that they from a town or a place where it's though they got people that's winning and they even connect and they even tell you stories. So it just, it just be deep. So I can understand and, where you're coming from. And and don't get it fucked up. To the niggas that's leading the race, I ain't telling you to, to, to reach back and pull raggedy ass niggas out the water. I'm saying if you lead the race and it's a youngin in your city and he developed his own fan base on his own, from the bottom. That means he's working. That means he's doing something out here. Because if you could come from absolutely nothing and on your own, you do a show and you got 300, 400, 500 motherfucking kids singing your shit, then that means you're working. And all you need is a nigga to help you go to the next level. Sometimes that's just, oh, you know what, bro? I'm on tour. I see you doing your thing out here, man. I'm going to take you on tour, man, let you, let you open up for me. That shit don't cost you no fucking money, man. That shit don't cost a real nigga no money to get an extra room, give a nigga a couple dollars to eat with, and say, I'm going to let you develop your talent. And, I, and at the same time, I'm going to sign you to my company, and we're going to get money together. So when I ask niggas that's, 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 that's made it, that's... That you been you done had the baton, you leading the race in your city. When I when I look back and say, how many niggas have you tried to help? Who have you pulled out the water? If your answer is nobody, you a nut ass nigga. That's just the bottom line to it. Because you ain't get there by your fucking self. Somebody had to help you. What what does team mean again? Together each achieve more. Okay. So if team mean together each achieve more, why you ain't being a team player to no fucking body else? Why you ain't saying, okay, I see you achieving on your own. Now let me, let me come in and upgrade your shit. Let me at least try to help you. Okay, I got a fan base of 600,000, 900,000, 2 million, 10 million, 20 million. What the fuck is supposed for me to say? Y'all go check this nigga out, man. This the next up and coming nigga out the city, man. Life changing. That's life changing for a motherfucker that's coming from the bottom. Because let's be for real. Most of these labels ain't nothing but motherfucking dick holsters. So so if you say some shit, guess what they gonna say? Yo, such and such said, he's the next person. Let's get him in here for a meeting. Even if you don't want to sign the kid. But all you got to do is acknowledge that the kid is out here moving for other motherfuckers to acknowledge him. If, if motherfuckers ain't doing that, man, you's a nut-ass nigga. So the cosign mixed with hard work is, is, is uh, change your life. Say that again. The cosign mixed with hard work will change your life. Absolutely. So so I understand exactly what you're saying because one thing we do know about these labels, they, they, is, they, 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 they oh. take it in a minute. Prime example. Wallow came home. I helped Wallow get pulled out the water. Right? That's a motherfucker right there. You feel me? That's a motherfucker right there. He's working. He's doing his own thing. He ain't sitting back bullshitting on some raggedy shit. He's working. And all I got to do is assist you. That's it. Here you go, Lo. Now you run around here getting 10000 to speak. For no, no, he got. He, he ain't just assist me. He got me some paper. He do some Ali. He, he, he do some unbelievable. Yo, they, they, they need you. Listen, I got this boy. He wanna. 
I mean, he needs somebody to pick up his bread. Absolutely. Get it. He definitely, he, and he gave me some game on the aspect of like, law, low, low, listen, it ain't, it ain't what, you, what you might be getting over here, but you got to take everything off the table. Right. Put that bread together. At one together. time, you know he was saying? running around doing shit for free. And, and I said, hold on, wait, wait. All that freebie shit stops here. You done, you done gave out all the freebies. Now, niggas got to pay you for this shit. And in the meantime, you you already helped people that fast. Now, and, and, no, you know what was crazy? I was helping people. When I came home from the penitentiary, I was living in my grandma's little small-ass room. It was like the size of a cell, living on the twin-size bed, little dressing there. My homeboy gave me a TV, actually. He gave me a TV that they was ready to throw away. My man, Ethan, shout out to him, New Lane. They was big-ass TV. I said, oh, what you doing with that? Oh, no, no, give me that. He said, need a cord. I went right to his name, got me a cord, and I was in. Hooked my little phone up to it. And every day I would get up, wherever I was putting rappers up, I'm talking about over hundreds of people, rappers, businesses. I would just shout them out because nobody was doing that. I never seen that on social media. Now it's a popular thing to do promo, whatever. I, nobody was doing that shit. So I would just go to the business, damn, uh, Keisha Soul Food, whatever the name may be, and go in. And, you know, and a lot of these businesses have grew from that. Some artists, that, you know, they came and went, but still I threw them up. I had this one thing where I would just throw them, I threw like 100 artists up. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? God damn, Jesus. you heard that. You always sound like an earthquake <laughs> listen, just happened. Listen, I threw, like, I, threw, I threw like 100 artists up, right, in like two days, just throwing them up, you know, showing them some love. Right. And I threw numerous people up. You can't, but the thing about it, you can't take care of everybody, everybody, what's the name? A lot of people don't have their landing right either. They don't have their landing right. Meaning, like you said, if you out here, a post can change your life only if you have your landing right. Right. That when I hit that, that button and I go to your page, I see your logo. I see your stuff. I see your booking information. I see your contact. I see that you got your, your good pictures. I see your stuff. It got People got to have something to land on. Right. A lot of people go viral, then they fall flat due to the fact of you just, a, you just it was that one moment. It was, that's it. It was not a movement. It was a moment. So you had that one thing, and a lot of times people be like, oh, post me, post me. You're not ready to get posted. Right. They don't have nothing to like follow up with. Because you're a waste of post because it's like, I come to your page and I don't even want to follow because there's nothing there. Right. This you didn't you didn't create you ain't got you ain't got no you product out. It's nowhere where I can You don't see. have nothing to keep me there. It's nothing to keep me there. And but, a lot of people don't understand that. They just be like, post because everybody's fascinated with the post. Everybody's just fascinated with being post and being lit. Like this shit got out of control to where it's though, just post me, post me. Could you throw me up? Shot you out for what? Like right. what are you doing? What are you doing to shot you? Just shot you out just to be shot you out. Yo, shout me out, bro. For what? Right. right. People be like, yo, Dev, y'all know you can I need to be song of the week on million dollars worth of game. Like, bro, you don't got no videos. You don't have nothing. You ain't right. got nothing. Like, what is what is somebody gonna land on? So it's like at the end of the day, I'm not the judge and jury, but at the same time, I want you to be in the best position possible. When Gil would, whenever Gil would, I be on Gil Pay, whatever was going on when I was coming up. I was doing something every day. I was putting out three videos a day. I was speaking. I was doing commercials. I was doing something every yeah, day. Something living in my grandma, living in my grandma, uh, you know, house. I was doing something every day. Like I never stopped doing something. So it's like people would just want you to just put them on in the black community. So I understand what he's saying, and, and but it's also flip side to what he's saying because like a motherfucker just be like put me on, put me on. Put, you're not doing shit, right. dog. And that's the point I make when a I say- A motherfucker thinks just because they rap, oh, yeah, yeah I got a mixtape. I, I just start rapping Friday, man. Throw me up. Throw you up for what? That's because all they really want is that post and a look cool for that two seconds. They, Maybe they get right. some hiney right. off of it. You know what right. I mean? That's it. Everybody want that five minutes of fame. Yeah. Popular. But, but, but let me tell you what's going on, too. When you got motherfuckers who be leading they city in a race, a lot of them niggas be low-key hating ass niggas. Because they, because you have a young motherfucker that's coming up, and a motherfucker from the record label will call him, yo. What do you think about? What do you think about Johnny Slider? And instead of bigging Johnny Slider the fuck up, they hate on a nigga. That's really like another ass name, Johnny Slider. I don't um, think the, he would be hot. The, 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 don't matter. <laughs> He's not hot <laughs> at all. Don't matter. <laughs> who who would have thought Takashi Six Nine? You wouldn't have said that was a hot fucking name yeah. either. So I'm just giving an Johnny example. Slider, yeah. You feel me? If he if he was a rider, then it would be a hot name. He slide on everything, Johnny slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fact. That nigga don't play no fucking game. See, you, you don't you, your brain don't think like my. You now you like now you like yeah, that is a hot name. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. You released that. Okay, that was nice. Cool. That was a good now, comeback. You got niggas that be at the top and behind closed doors. They be on the phone like that nigga ain't doing nothing. He ain't really that hot. So now that'll turn the labels right off. Well, such and such said he ain't really that hot. He's not doing nothing. Niggas be low key blocking motherfuckers, man. That block is real. That block is real. You know how many niggas tried to block me, man? Oh, he beefing with Lil Wayne. You know how many niggas was holding 
Little Wayne's dick. I'm talking about they was pistol whipping they face with Little Wayne's dick. Because me and because Wayne dissed me and I dissed him back. Let's not ever get that fucked up. Wayne put out a song called Problem Solver. Gilly, man, I don't think you want to fuck with me. The gonna be irking in person. And tw- right. And then I came back and I was the wrong Did kid. you write that, Joan, uh, this against yourself? No, I didn't. Uh, but listen. I was writing Gilly Raspberry. But listen. Oh, all right. But I was wrong because I came out and dissed the nigga back because the nigga was here and I was here. So now everywhere I went, you know what motherfuckers wanted to know? You still be from Lil Wayne? Yo, it's... Is you and Lil Wayne cool? It's, like I said, DJ Khaled did that shit and then turned around. No disrespect, but he was holding, he was cash money's dick holster. No, fuck it, it is a little ris- disrespect. He was cash money dick holster and then he had to turn around and, fe- and, 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 and him and Baby, Baby ain't get him his fucking money. Now Rick Ross got to step up for you and make songs coming at Baby because he done burnt your ass. But at one time, you was trying to block on me. Uh, I love the song, Gilly, but I can't play it because you're beefing with Lil Wayne. But then you had to turn around, and now you look up, baby, oh, your ass a shitload of money, and now Rick Ross got to step up for you. You see how God work? Shit, Wayne had to get his money. <laughs> but but back in, back in 2004, when I said, you're four albums in and ain't received a publishing check, so stop playing with me, boy. Uh, I was hating. Huh. I didn't know see, what the fuck I was talking about, huh? See, this is very important when you're talking about hating. When you're, when you're on top and you're doing your thing, a motherfucker, you could do some nut shit, right? You could be on some cold sucker shit and can't nobody speak against that. If you speak against that, because we're living in a world where it's though, everybody just sit around and if you're winning, they hold your dick. Right. And if you say you anything. can't do nothing wrong. If you say anything about that person, a motherfucker could be totally nutty. Oh, you're hating. See, see, what's the name fuck the whole game up, Mace and Puff Daddy? Got a PhD, play a haters degree. When that shit dropped, everybody used that word. Hate mean a great dislike. That shit got taken out of control. To where as though, if you don't like something, you hate. Oh, man, I don't like that shirt he got on. Oh, man, you're a fucking hater. Everybody is ultra emotional now. To where as though, you can't even dislike something. If you dislike something, it's like, oh, yeah, you, you, you's a hater. Yeah, right. niggas that be bums and got nothing going on be thinking niggas is hating on them. Yeah, niggas is hating but, on but, but I want to say something. A lot of people got to take the 50 cent effect. They got to do that 50 cent thing. 50 Cent, what 50 Cent did, he became unblockable. He came out, put in his mix, and went the fuck hard. Right. He went in on, he went in. I became unblockable. You know what I mean? Unfucking blockable. Because you know what? Tell me one other fucking artist, right, that's been independent, that's been relevant for 20 fucking years. I'm a wait. What the fuck you mean? There's a lot of them. You you had, listen, you had, all that time, it's a fucking bunch of Grandmaster Martial artists out there that have been... Uh, Fucking what's the name for for, for independent? They we don't I, we don't I, subscribe nigga, to nobody. Thing. I said, he you said artist. You said artist. You said artist. Like tech, now, hold on. What about Tech Nine? Oh, he's a legend. He's a legend. He get real money. Tech Nine. He's a legend. He get real money. See, see. Let me tell you something. One thing about Tech Nine. You know, my my business partner Tom Bahali is from Kansas City, so I went and visited. Tech Nine's whole establishment. That nigga is living and doing better than 90% of these rap niggas in the rap game. That nigga got 18 Willis. That nigga got about 15 fucking promotional vans. That nigga got merchandise unbelievable. A whole fucking two warehouses, man. This nigga has two warehouses, man. You walk into this nigga office, man. This nigga got Harley Davidsons hanging from the ceiling, man. Fuck driving them. No, these is just trophies. We don't even drive these bitches. They just hanging from the ceiling, decorating his motherfucking offices, man. So shout out to Tech Nine because he's a motherfucker that he, it, let me tell you, and to all the independent artists that's coming up, I know y'all probably don't even know who Tech Nine is. And if you do know who Tech Nine is, Please get in tune with who this motherfucker is because he can show you how to win on an independent level on a whole different fucking playing field. And to the point where it's like, it's crazy that I ain't never gotten a person car and he had Tech Nine on. 
But I know who Tech Nine is, I and too. I know he getting money. I read up on him a, a, a bunch of articles. Let me in tell the you joint. something. That nigga is throwing ones in the fireplace in the wintertime to keep the house warm, man. You hear me? That nigga, his shout out to his partner too, man. Them motherfuckers is doing it big. But one thing I also commend Tech Nine is because that motherfucker go on tour and he take about seven of his own artists with him. He even took an artist that was signed to our fucking label with him. And they sell merch like a motherfucker. And they sell merch like a motherfucker. So shout out, so, so shout out to Tech Nine too for reaching down and pulling motherfuckers out the water. So we're going to get to the next segment, but I just want to end this segment with this. If you're an artist and you lead in your city in a race and you don't reach down and pull one of the artists that's from your city out the water, you a bitch-ass nigga. And I don't give a fuck who feel what type of way about what I'm saying. You're an ultra bitch-ass nigga. Now on to the next. Now we're going to talk about something that's very important that's going down a lot. When is it cool to beef with somebody about a woman? Never. I'm just, I'm just saying a lot of dudes is beefing over women out here. The, the only time it's ever cool to beef over a woman is if somebody disrespected your woman. Meaning you out and about with your woman and a nigga disrespect your woman in some sort of way. Then absolutely. I, I'm definitely going about me and you about to beef. We about to go to war about this shit. You just called Tootie an a, a Asian whore? Shut the fuck up, you Asian whore. Are we about to beef? You just, you just, you just call April. Shut the fuck up, bitch. Oh, oh yeah, we about to beef. But if I found out that a nigga was glazing Tootie, pistol whipping Tootie with his dick on the side, and Tootie, and Tootie out here willingly getting laid down and sprayed down, I ain't never beefing with no nigga. You don't never check the pimp. You check the hoe, man. That's the number one rule, man. You never check the pimp. You check the hoe. Niggas be out here beefing with a nigga because your will, your woman willingly sucked the jello pudding pop out of a nigga's dick. You know how you know how many people, you know, situations where as though a dude is slander a dude name or he's a rat. He got he toe all over a woman all because a dude baby legging a woman down. Absolutely. Hey, baby legging a woman down. He got a baby uh-huh. leg. Who that, that is? is? That's baby leg. leg. Uh-uh. He got a baby, baby leg. leg. I'm baby leg. They call me baby leg. I got oh, a nah, baby nah, leg. Nah, 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 I'm nah, just saying. Nah, all right, all right, my fault. My nah, fault. But just I'm just the saying. hook, dog. Your rap part is whack. The, the hook. Nobody know. The hook listen, is on fire. But, but, but this is what I'm saying though. You know how many dudes slander dudes? They oh yeah, he's this. He's this. His watch fake. He's this. That nigga's a nut ass nigga. Listen, all about that that thing. Now. What I'm saying is, and the reason I'm talking about the beefing thing, because this, it, it be all these secret beefs on, and people don't even know they be beefing with somebody about a woman because they didn't slay and sprayed her. Because now we're living in a world where it's though, dudes is having access to women they would have never had access to a day in their life. Right. Number one, you got a zillion dudes in jail, a zillion dudes dead, a zillion, you, then you got a bunch of dudes that already got these situation where it's though, shorty, you got to be the side piece of something. Right. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, it's so thin. That's these women, successful women, women that's got something going on, women that's beautiful all ways around, they're dealing with Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, just anybody. So yeah. anybody getting a shot to where you got these dudes thinking they players. So when a real player come up, they be hurt. Oh, my God, what? Are you, how you get her? Uh, uh, I got money. I got, no, 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 no. You never got a woman. Your money got the woman. Right. You, you're not a player. You're a pair. Absolutely. And, and, that, and, that, and then you mm-hmm. have a slayer come through and slayer, sprayer. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You have you have Justin Slayer come through. Justin Slayer come through and play, <laughs> and, and it's and like on some real stuff. It's like it's like crazy. It's real crazy because these dudes is going crazy over these women, right? And the value the women don't even know the value of themselves no more. They just giving anybody access these days. Absolutely, because now we live in a world where Instagram got it so messed up. Everybody became lazy. And everybody wants somebody with paper because they don't know how to get their own paper. And then you got and then you got you got women who. They already determined that a nigga's gonna get some pussy from off his Instagram. Facts. From the rip. You so so before she even meet him, before they even conversate, before they even go out, any of that, he's a thorough, he's thorough. Listen, he's, listen. He's he's fly. One day when he's whole time. This nigga's this nigga is 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 bootleg. Is an American stunt man. So listen, right. <laughs> me, me, listen. This me and nigga Gil, evil can evil. Me and Gil knows somebody, right? 
This boy is a sniper. He's out here sniping these chicks. He don't listen. He don't wear nothing that's real. Nothing. <laughs> he listen. Listen. And guess what? The niggas, the Canal he's, Street King. <laughs> he's an American, all, all American. See, five time All Star, basement warrior. What? <laughs> this boy was a legend with a basement. Too. He lived in his mom's basement, his grandma's basement, his sister basement. Got all the sneaks lined up, all the get. This boy is a legend. Let me tell you something. He works that app. He's an Instagram pimp. A uh, what? And, and you got you got another nigga. I ain't gonna say his name, but he's a comedian in Philadelphia. This nigga got. This nigga jewelry box is better than Puffs. <laughs> you hear me? This motherfucker been rocking fake rollies before fake rollies even existed. I think he, I think he the one who developed the fake Rolexes. <laughs> you hear me? This nigga got Richard Millie's. This motherfucker got, he got everything. You hear me? I'm talking about, and then when you see him, this nigga know how to make a, a motherfucking $42 outfit look goddamn luxurious and glorious. You hear me? This motherfucker, he'll throw scarves on around his. Now I'm talking about this nigga got Louis Vuitton scarves, not, not Louis Vuitton. <laughs> this, this, this description got, <laughs> is too detailed. Hey, this nigga got Louis Vuitton scarves. This, you hear me? This nigga got Emilio Flucci. You hear me? This nigga got Sherelle shit. You hear me? I'm talking about. So he got all the fake clothes. All the fake watches. And guess who he out here knocking down? All the fake bitches. All the goofy bitches who don't know no better. It's lit. You hear me? What you say? It's lit. That's what's up. That's what they get. They want to be out here chasing niggas with now, bread? No, no. Get, get, now get, you talking get. about chasing people with bread. Let me ask you. Is tricking? Is tricking okay? Is that is that wrong? Well, listen. Is tricking wrong? Well, you talking about they, well, they well, were well, look, well, a lot of motherfuckers say it ain't tricking if you got it. I disagree. It's still tricking to me. It's still tricking to me. Because you got to understand, a lot of niggas' vernacular ain't that spectacular. A lot of niggas don't really got confidence. So the only thing that give them niggas confidence is the money. How many motherfuckers we know? I know a gang of niggas in Philadelphia alone who, when you first meet them niggas, they so humble. Niggas is so laid back. Such a good dude. Then a nigga get some money. You're like, who the fuck is this nigga? That's what I said about you when I uh, was in jail and you got that money. And you became a rapper. Uh, you say, who the fuck is this nigga? Because you ain't start getting bad yeah. chicks until you became a rapper and start getting money. Let me tell you something. You just like the rest of these bulls. Let me tell you something. You now just you, like the you, you just you like can, the rest of these bulls. You ain't no. You, you can activate your your, your lie. You just, to, your lie you just like the rest of these bulls. But you, you just like the rest of these bulls. You just like about me. You got your rap money. You was somebody well, different. When I was in jail and I was watching me. it on TV, I said, "This guy, I don't even know him no more." One thing about me. Who is he? What happened to you? You know, I always got bad bitches. You was humble. Yeah, yeah, and we we could ask any nigga that grew up on Barry Avenue, Fat Malik, Ricky, Phil. He was humble like a fucking Hassan. Listen, listen, listen. He, was shocky, like a a he was humble. Shocky. He was humble like a Wu Tang. Like a Wu Tang intro. Any nigga that grew up brave. in my neighborhood, <laughs> he knew, was humble. Before I even had a car, I was getting off the subway in the ninth grade with my bitches, and it was bad. Nigga, my vanilla always been spectacular. You was getting off the subway in the twelfth grade with your Let's be for real. Uh, yeah, you, you're right. You, you're right. Wasn't nothing wrong with that. I didn't get that nasty ass Delta 88 until about the 12th grade. So I probably was getting off the train in the 12th grade with my bitches. Till I, till I got that nasty ass Delta 88 with the with the raggediest rag top in the city. But how many bad bitches got in that got in that raggedy motherfucker? That's the point. You hear me? Let, when, when me and Tootie met, Tootie didn't know who the fuck I was. When I walked up on Tootie her. Tootie knew you was a rapper. When, when I walked up on her and I put my hands around her hair and I smelt her shit and said... Tootie finesse you. She finesse you. She dry finesse. Oh, I don't know who you are. <laughs> April knew. April knew who you my, was. When my you name got is April. What? April knew who you was I mean, when no. you got April. Let's keep it real, nigga. It ain't like you. Listen, it ain't like you activated listen, your regular, pimp game. I'm just a regular guy. It ain't, like, it ain't like you activated your I'm just, pimp game. I'm just game, a regular nigga. guy. April knew who you was. You walked in. She said, "Oh, oh, wow, Mo two six seven. You listen, nut listen, ass listen, nigga. Listen, I'm just a regular guy, man. Don't do that. And you, you went there. Can I do a commercial for you? <laughs> 
<laughs> you, you whipped your phone out. This is how he got April. He popped up at her shop, whipped his phone out, and said, I got this beautiful sister that's doing all this luxurious and glorious shit. Tell him a little bit about yourself, sister. Old time, he was trying to activate his game on her. She ain't know. She was like, oh, divaglam.com, my hair company. Make sure y'all buy, you know, purchase my hair. I got the beautiful Stella that's going on. He hit her with the sister? He, what? He, listen. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Okay, let me let let lie on me. Hold on. Now he listen, didn't. Listen, let me, listen, let me tell you something. Me... He didn't li listen. He might ain't pay to get her, but let me tell you something. He definitely played to get her. Yeah, let me, let me explain oh, something. No, 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 let me explain, let me explain something. something nigga. When I walked in there, all you, you heard was doom, 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 doom. I slid across the floor. She said, "Oh my God, fill it up and slim. I've been waiting for you." No, no, the fuck she did. No, she did. Let me tell you how he said. Let me tell you what. Let me tell you how he met April. We had to go to Baltimore to do something. This nigga pulled up and was like. We was already talking. You, you Cuz, I'll be right back, right? I'll be right back. This nigga had me sitting in a, in a car, and I don't know where the fuck we was at. We, I don't know if we was on the east side of Baltimore or the west side of Baltimore. I know we was in a little hood. He was acting like a coward. Right? You with me. Right. You with me. He, he, you walks, with me. In, he walks into a, a shop. I don't even know where he's at. I'm sitting there for like 35, 40 minutes. Next thing I know, he come out, yo, cuz. I come in. I don't know what the fuck. You lying, going you wasn't on. sitting there that long because yes, your scary nigga. ass came in the joint. Yes, you so, were scared to death. So I These B-more niggas real. So I walk in. You seen in, the corner. Right? You seen you seen the so, wire. So These I niggas real. Right? You gonna leave me in the car. He arguing with me about so, uh, so that ass right? up. Nigga, you with me, nigga. I walk in, right? He trying to stare April all in her eyes and shit. So this time, at this time, she ain't paying a nigga no attention. You hear me? She ain't paying a nigga no attention. He lying like a little Monroe. He in there doing all these videos. Nigga won't put his camera down. I said, what, what, what the fuck? We, we, we usually get paid for this shit. This nigga did 11 videos. This nigga did 42,000 worth of promo. Ain't get a dime. <laughs> he lied. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga this lied. Nigga we did 42, nigga did 42,000 worth of promo. So you are a payer. Mm, 42,000. <laughs> you, you didn't quarter your no, border. Yeah. 42,000 worth <laughs> of game. He's 42. <laughs> lying. He's lying. Listen. Now that I think about it, you, you didn't quarter your border. You lying. You bought your way into April's heart. You lying. You gave her so much promo, she had to go on a date with you. This nigga's, all right, I'll go on one date with you. All right, for, for 42,000 worth of promo. Lying. He gave her 42,000 worth of promo. Listen, man. It she, did. Listen, she it slid. Did. Did this what happened. She slid into my DM like Ricky Henderson in an all star game. Did she? When you gonna stop playing? When you gonna stop playing and give me forty two thousand worth of promo? He was like, I'm on my way to Baltimore tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> he lied. He lied. He lied. He nigga lied. was in there. Nigga had a bald head since fucking ninety four. <laughs> nigga in there talk about all these luxurious and glorious hair. Make sure you get your luxurious <laughs> and glorious hair from her right here. Say your name again, baby. He's a nut ass. Abra Diva Styles. <laughs> If, if y'all buy hair <laughs> off of anybody other than say your name again, baby. well, the next uh, we're going to move on. <laughs> to, uh, Styles. We're going to move on. This he's a nut ass nigga. Now that I think about it, you didn't you didn't call to your border, dog. He's a nut, man. This dude, you this know dude, what I mean, and I, I, this you still got her, so I commend you. You feel what I'm saying? This I commend you. You feel because you still got her, so so all that counts is that she loves you now. That's all that counts. You know she what loves, I mean? She loves me in a beautiful way. I he think, didn't physically have to go in his pockets. But he went in his pockets. Now we're going to get into. See how you trying to push the next segment? Stories from the cell. <sighs> Stories from a dark, gloomy cell. And it was, you know, I, I really don't talk about my altercations in prison, but uh, my first altercation in prison, I was down the juvenile block. It was juvenile, but we were certified as adults. Mm -hmm. This is a big dude. His name was John, right? Mm. Big John? Big John, right? It was, we was young boys, though, but he was one of the big young boys. They know no better. Okay. So one day, you know, we talk, I'm talking to somebody, so he said some fly stuff to me. So you know what I did? I gave him an invitation to my cell. No, you didn't. What? <laughs> I give out them. I Wait, gave hold on. That not right. Listen, you gave a nigga an invitation to the cell. No, 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 no. That, that's where you go and mix it up at. Right. I gave him an invitation to my cell. And at that moment, I was bluffing because I said, oh, shit. Cause I'm, you know me, I was I was the type of dude. I ain't, Listen, I don't play. What? I tell him, let's kill each other then. Because I'm trying to bluff. You know what I mean? I know you scared and I'm so scared. So a nigga pull that knife listen, out. Did it guard. I know you, listen, I know you guard. scared. That's my whole thing. <laughs> when you tell somebody something like that, let's kill each other then, motherfucker. I know he's scared. I'm scared. Hopefully, his scaredness is more than mine. Now, nah, some niggas gonna, is going to just be like, so, yeah, what's up? Then? Let, let's, but, but a lot of people at work. Big John pulled that this axe ain't out on him. No, no, no. So, so we get Let's kill each other, motherfucker. All right. So listen, guard. Listen, I ain't even in the penitentiary yet. I'm still, guard. I'm still in the county, right? I'm down the county in the juvenile joint, right? 
but we certified as adults, meaning we grown ass men now. We going to the penitentiary. <laughs> so I'm in there. I'm, I'm preparing myself for this real shit. So I tell him, nigga, get in there, man. You got me mixed up, nigga. I ain't one of these. And I'm trying to figure out the whole time, is he what? Motherfucker, yeah, I'm, he tell me, I'm going to fuck you up. I said, yeah, you know. I said, listen, first thing I said, listen, first thing I said to myself, yeah, man, slide up in that joint. It ain't about nothing. I'm saying to myself, how the fuck this going to turn out? <laughs> I'm saying to myself, oh, shit, I invited the wrong nigga. To, I invited, I didn't threaten the wrong nigga with a good time, right? He slide up in there, right? So when he slide up there, I, listen, I go right in that joint, right? Because, you know, everybody on the block, so that's when you got to, nigga, I, nigga, you got me fucked up. You, nigga, you know where I'm from. I'm from down north. Ah, he was, nigga, I'm from north too, nigga. I'm like, damn, all right, that shit ain't work. Okay. <laughs> so I'm just playing things in my mind like, this shit, I got to get it. So when he slide in the cell, I pull the gate back. I said, yeah, man, because you got, I'm talking that shit all we in. So this is not through. I'll throw the sheet up, right? Yeah, because you got me fucked up. I don't know. So dude's looking like, damn, why are we getting to this boy? This time? I'm like, yeah, you got me fucked up. I put the joint up, put the sheet up. Started and, bitching at a no, rapid rate. And then I go into the joint, like, look. <laughs> He started bitching at a rapid rate. But I put the sheet up, right? Because this is my first, this is my first real, you know, altercation in the joint, in the slammer. I threw that sheet up. That's when everything changed. Listen, man. I said, hold up. Fuck, we going through Nigga turn Muslim sign. Lake up. <laughs> listen, listen. I hit the joint. Man, what the fuck we going through something for? We the realest niggas on this block. He <laughs> just that third. He, <laughs> so listen, I'm like, this guy. He said, yeah, he said, he said, yeah, I know all that, but we still got to handle this. I'm like, handle what? We, we, we ain't got to go through that shit. That's for them niggas out there, right? He said, no, we got to go through this shit, nigga. You going to scream me on the block. This is that third. I said, listen, that shit ain't even about nothing. I go to go grab the floor brush. That nigga gripped me Punch by my shirt. Listen, that motherfucker gripped me by my shirt and slammed me like on a, on, 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 it's like concrete in the cell. Boom. I'm like, I'm trying to listen. This motherfucker was strong. Guard. Listen, this motherfucker was strong. Guard. I grabbed the cuff of his pants, right? And that was the thing that saved my life. I grabbed them Jones. His legs wasn't as strong as his body. Flipped them Jones up. He fell. Ripped my whole shirt. I grabbed that. I grabbed that floor brush. What? Say something, nigga. I knock your. F oh, you like? Oh, 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 oh. So now this is my play. I ripped the sheet down because dudes was outside. Say I knock. Go ahead, Nick. What? The whole time I'm like, please walk this nigga out of the cell. God, God. listen, listen. I'm praying to all the guys. Please get him out of the cell. Please get him out of the cell. All the guys that exist that I ever heard of, knew of, ran into, people spoke about. I'm praying to all them Jones in my mind. But at the same time, I'm putting the bluff down. Because if you can <laughs> if you can fake him, you can beat him. So I'm a, you can bluff him, you can beat him. So I'm sitting there like this. He just, uh, hold up, no, don't hit me. I'm like, knock your motherfucker. Knock your motherfucker. Dude's like, damn, why I worked him out in there? I'm like, I'm tired of anything. From when he slammed me on a, he slammed me on a, on, on the wall, I'm tired. He took everything out of me. So, <laughs> but that pants grab, that was jujitsu right there. Yeah, that was jujitsu. That was jail jitsu. No, 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 no. That was that was that was <laughs> that was Jeff and jitsu. Motherfucking life was online. So after after that came right, everybody like, damn, wow. I was like, nigga, get up. I opened the joint. Get the fuck my son. Clean myself up, nigga. You got the. I mean, so knock it. He slide all out this time <laughs> third. He slide out the joint. So dudes all on my gate like, damn, wow, where? I'm punching him in his mouth as soon as he came. <laughs> I know his boys that was in there that's gonna hear this joint like, damn, wow, you had a steak in here. <laughs> Listen, I punched him in his mouth, man. I ain't I ain't got time for this. That, that. After that, because he was big John, dudes was a little, dudes gave me my props after that. I got some props, but at the same time, it was like, that was, that was, listen, man, I didn't think I was gonna make it out of the cell that day. I thought I was in San Quentin somewhere, man. I ain't know what the she fuck. It got was real, on. huh? It got real. My life was on the line. Everything was on the line. If he didn't have them cuffs, them cuffs saved my life. When he was able to slam and his legs was weak, other than that, I was done. But I ain't gonna front. Like, I was scared to death that day. Cause you know I'm thinking like, you know, you know my mouthpiece won't get me out of this. Cause I was fast. I was more. So you was STD. Yeah, scared to death. Absolutely. But I was victorious that day, and I came up out of that man. But a lot of people. He wasn't really victorious though. Why yeah. wasn't I? I mean, see, you understand? Okay, like, hold on. Let me, this is what I don't understand. Why every time you talk about your encounters in prison, like when Big John woke you up in the cell, when the crackhead boy woke you up in the cell, when. Big John didn't wake me up in the no, cell. No, no. What, what, what oh, was no, no, name? Mr. John. Mr. John. He was squeezing off. Okay, yeah. Okay. Oh, no, he told him about the other, like the, the crackhead cell. Yeah, okay, that, right. That, that, yeah, but then, then, you was... got, then you had this. Why you don't never activate your karate? Your listen, kung fu or your jiu-jitsu? Listen, like, can, I, can I just say something? Can I just say something? There's times and there's places for that shit. He was too close up on me. That's no, 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 no. You, you want to be close, right? Bruce Lee activate his shit whenever. But ho, 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 ho. 
Bruce Leroy activated his shit in the movie. Jiu-Jitsu was grappling. Mm. Don't, right, yeah. grappling. Jiu-Jitsu was grappling. Bo, 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 bo. And that's what I did when I pulled his pants. But I'm, I'm going to say did. this. You did. I'm going to say this. I will say this. Don't you ever mention Bruce Leroy on the show no more. I told you I'm beefing with him. Second of all, you and you don't have the qualifications or the verifications or the credentials or the certifications to even be talking about martial arts to me. Like, that shit, y'all ain't even qualified First for First of all, who, who have you ever activated your feet on or your martial art game on? Because every story you got is you BRR, bitching at a rapid rate. You praying to all the gods no, 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 no. in the universe. You prayed to Allah. You prayed to Jesus. You prayed to Buddha, the sun god, the my moon life, My god. life was online at that time. But I will say this. You know the first person I kicked? You know the first person I kicked? It was Earl. You know why? Once he was taking me through pistol whipping training. That's when you get pistol whipped to be able to you gotta be able to endure the shit because it's a possibility that things like that could happen. What kind of pistol? It was a, it was a, uh all I know it had tape on a tape on a Oh, uh, I thought I, oh, I thought that was like a no, code, no. a code word for something no, no. else. No, no, I had tape on the handle. So whoop, 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 whoop. So as I'm taking these blows to the head, I kicked him a couple times. When I kicked Earl that day, he stopped and said, That was the strength. That was strength of an elephant. When he told me that, that's when everything changed for me. What? That's when I knew that I was in the hierarchy and I knew I was on the next level. That's so, when I. So you kicked Earl with the strength of an elephant? Yeah, man. He was pistol whipping me. When you was 12 years old? Oh, my God, man. That was training, man. Let's get to this next segment, Million Dollars Worth of Game. <laughs> well, first, <laughs> was, first we, we are going to still let Wallow. Wallow's going to break a brick with his nuts or some shit like oh, that, yeah. right? Yeah, well, you got the brick? No, nah, no. Nah, I mean, we're going to do it probably next episode or something. That's, I've I already done stuff like that, but I'm... I, 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 so, let's stand up right now. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me give you one kick to the joints. <laughs> nah, chill, 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 yo, chill, 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 <laughs> you see, you see, boy, them bitches would have been up in your stuck. I caught him a little bit. I, I, I caught him a little bit. I'm okay. That nigga said that. <laughs> I'm okay. Let's get it to me and I was worth Let's a game. Let's get it to me and I was worth a game. He tried to. He, he wounded me. <laughs> an ambush. You're a wounded warrior. <laughs> I've been ambushed. Hey, hey, what up, Gilly? So, this shorty I've been banging got a ton of problems. She cool people, but her car always broke. Whoa. Fighting with her baby dad. Problematic kids. Can't keep a job. Never has money. Got to pay for her gas to come to see me at the crib. I've been told her, let's just be friends. But she don't get it. Am I wrong, bruh? I don't need no more bills nor problems. Give me some game, Gilly. Well, let me just tell you something, younger. Oh, you got to get a woman that can match your hustle. You hear me? If you got a job and you work hard for everything that you earn, you got a car, you got your own place, You, why is you running around messing with a triple B? A beautiful bum bitch. I'm confused. That's the story of a lot of guys. That's the story of a lot of guys. Let me tell you something, man. You got to get a woman that can match your hustle. A woman that has the same ambition and the same drive as you. Because if you don't, then you'll end up with a triple B. And that goes for the ladies as well. The problem with ladies is a lot of ladies is in fucked up relationships because they meet a bum ass nigga that they like. And they think just because I hold him down, he's not going to cheat. Just because I hold him down, he's, he'll be there for me because nobody else is holding him down. No. All he, he has a bum-ass nigga mentality. So all he going to do is drop you off at work, drive you a car, go bust his little scripts for his little pills, go sell his little bullshit weed. Wavecat Mike. Ain't really making no money. Oh, you used to do segments like that called Wavecat Mike. No, you that's my me? cousin. He's still out there. Yeah. He, he going to hold the couch down while you at work. 
You at work, you working 72 fucking hours a week. This nigga home playing Fortnite for 72 no, fucking this, hours this, with his homies. No, 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 no. He playing 2K. And on top of that, he's going to show up late to pick you up for work, and his homie's going to be in the car rolling up. Right. Then, then you don't even smoke weed. This nigga pick you up. You, you was like that back in the day. You in a cloud of smoke. But the difference is I was picking a motherfucker up in my car. So no, it's no. different. No, you was driving a Keisha car. It's, it's different. You hear me? See, so a lot of ladies, you get what you ask for. Homie, if you got all these good things going on, why is you messing with a bitch who got all these problems? Well, let me ask you a question. Why are you even attracted to her? I'm confused because I could like a I could like a woman initially, but then after I meet her, if if the bitch got a, got more problems than a motherfucking '62 Chevy. This bitch need an oil change, tune up, new spark plugs. The bitch need new tires, new rotors. Why the fuck am I going to purchase this car? Mm. So a lot of times in life, you give you them joints still hurt. <laughs> I see him over here like. Mm. <laughs> no, I'm talking, about, I'm, I'm talking about what you're saying. <laughs> them I'm a warrior. He's <laughs> trained. I'm a warrior. Grandmaster trained. He took you to pistol whipping training. He take you to kick your nuts up in your stomach training. We did I? all that too. Oh, yeah, I just did. did that at the Grandmaster retreat. Oh, oh, all right. So a lot of times in in life, you get what you ask for, man. You, you you women be running around here thinking, you meet a nigga, you know he ain't shit. Know the nigga ain't got nothing going on. But somewhere in your raggedy ass mind, you think, I'm going to be the one to change him. Yeah, that's what they think. Mm, no, you're not. He's going to be better because of me. No, you're not. Bitch, when you met him, he was a pit bull. Now you're trying to turn him into a cat. <laughs> you can't turn a dog into a cat, bitch. He'd been burying his bone in bitch's backyard. <laughs> now all of a sudden, you want to you wanna turn a, a goddamn full-blown pit bull into a goddamn uh, to a full-blown cat. It's never going to happen. He is who he is. Sometimes you got to acknowledge that a nigga is going to be who he is. But they be like, I'm going to give him 10 to 15 years to grow up. No. No, uh -huh. you got dudes out here reliving their second childhood. Tell them. Dudes is literally out here living with broads, eating up, eating up all the food and everything. Ain't bringing nothing to the table, ain't doing nothing. But like, Drinking like all we the said, kids, sippy cups. The sippy cups. The fucking the fruit roll-ups up. The Kool-Aid and all that. Dudes 40, walk right to the kitchen. Open the refrigerator, 40. You 40 in the Kool-Aid and shit. The juicy juice and all that stuff, you just out of pocket. But what it is is that, like we said earlier, it's a limited men up here out here. So women are just taking anything to be just like, oh, I don't, I'm not alone. My sister alone, I'm not. Yeah. And this is a man in this situation. He need to get out of that situation ASAP. He's tripping. Yeah, well, you know, he first of all, he talk about she never got no money. She got a her baby daddy be tripping. Her kids. He's don't. tripping. Her maybe kid. maybe he just don't be getting broads like that, and she got the fatty. He's tripping. He's, he's her, he losing her, his her mind. Kids don't listen. He losing God his damn. mind. What what does she do right? She don't even know how to how to how to discipline a kid. She don't even know. Her, she don't know how to. She don't know. She don't he know how like to, he trapped the kids. Don't listen. They yeah. <laughs> disrespecting. He jumping on. He spilling right. shit on. He shut the fuck up. <laughs> they spilling stuff all on him. <laughs> so at the end of the day, a lot of guys and a lot of females, you get what you ask for. You know, and, and and the problem is, uh, when when you get in these relationships, God give you the signs. It's up to you to pick up the signs. A lot of people is in fucked up relationships because they don't follow the signs. Prime example, you in a relationship with a nigga, and that nigga sleep with his phone in his tank top every night. Like this. <laughs> That's a fucking sign. Nobody do no that shit like that. Yes, they do. I was on the phone last night on live with a nigga and his woman, like, he puts his phone in his drawers when Damn. he go to sleep. Right. That's a sign. Like, you, 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 you got a woman, that bitch get in the shower with her phone. Shh. That's a sign. You, you and your woman go out to the club. She know every rapper, a fucking comedian, actor. Basketball player, promoter, promoter, nigga, slap your bitch DJ. five, nigga, nigga, slap your bitch five, and then go right to her ass, wham, <laughs> wham, bitch, slap your bitch on the ass like she made a sack in the Super Bowl. That's a sign. 
A lot of motherfuckers <laughs> being fucked up relationships because they don't follow the signs. Ain't no way she just happens to know that many rappers. She don't rap. She don't go to. She, she don't <laughs> right. produce. Right. <laughs> what the fuck is going the, on? The bitch know. The bitch know. The bitch know the whole Eagles football team. I know Chris. I know Neef. <laughs> right. <laughs> I know. All them she niggas. she know motherfuckers. You don't need no. How you know the nigga without his helmet on? I never seen that nigga without his helmet. He's on. a third stream. No, he's a third stream. It's like you yeah, it's like. That's Michael Jenkins. What? Where? How the fuck you know what Michael Jenkins look like? <laughs> Malcolm Jenkins look like. Bitch, I never seen him without his helmet on. What the fuck? <laughs> There's a. That's Donovan McStab. <laughs> Donovan McStab. <laughs> what the? I thought his last name was McNab. Oh, oh no, yeah, McNab. McNab. <laughs> oh, oh, he stabbed you, I'm bitch. Oh yeah, okay, it came. Out. So you gotta watch out, man. Yeah, know the whole Philadelphia soul and all that. Right, bitch. Know the <laughs> Philadelphia soul. <laughs> Bitch, no soccer players from the Philadelphia Union. That's Fafa. Bitch, yeah. who the fuck is Fafa? Who's Fafa? Oh, that's the number one player for the Philadelphia yeah, Union. Bitch, know. you don't even watch soccer. Yep. That I, shit don't even come on TV. Doing. How knows. the fuck do you know Fafa? That's that's. Let me tell you something. One thing about groupies, they do their research. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are amazing. <laughs> Amazing in what like, way? Like, and like just their networking, well, their sneaky networking yeah, abilities is right. crazy. Uh, like a bitch will tell you what type of car that is. I oh, know that's the Audi. No, that's the A8 supercharged with 432 horse. Bitch, how do you know this? Because <laughs> a nigga she was fucking with had listen, one. Listen, listen. <laughs> Check this out. Yeah. Let me ask you something real important. If you don't have a social media page, you a master creeper? No. If if you a guy, whoa, 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 whoa. hold on, I'm gonna tell you. You talk about a woman, or you talk, period. Okay, if you a guy, anybody, period. Anyway. Any any nigga that any guy who like, no, nah, I don't do the social media shit. I accumulate that with one thing. You sell drugs, nigga. <laughs> 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 That's what I accumulate. That I don't do that social media shit. Mm. You got the bricks. In. But what about woman? A woman. <laughs> you got the pounds in. A woman. A woman. Um. I don't really look at it from a woman's standpoint like that because normally when a guy say that I'm right, nigga, be, no, no, I don't, I don't fuck around with that social media shit, that shit. I don't, yeah, I don't really do that shit. So wait, you don't have a Facebook, an Instagram, a Twitter, nothing? No, I don't do, I don't do none of that shit. You got the pounds in. A lot of chicks do be up with no good if they. I met some of the most devious ones without no social media. You hear that? I, I see. I don't know. I, I don't. I don't really ever come across women who don't have. No social and media. And that's what that's how you know it'd be devious. It'd be like, because whenever they say stuff like, I don't want people in my business, it's like, what kind of uh, business? Like, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what, what oh, yeah, business? <laughs> I did hear bitch say that before. I don't really do social media. I don't want people in It's my like, business. it's nothing on there. Oh, you don't want people to know. You got a husband. Right. And you don't want people to see Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike putting them hard eyes on your page. Yeah, because see, if, t- if she get a page. With the she, eggplant emoji. If she got 10 boyfriends. Them 10 boyfriends wonder why they not posted. So if she eliminated <laughs> the page. 10 boyfriends. Yeah, damn, you know damn. what I'm saying? Yeah. That's an ultra damn, war. Damn. Yo, and that's what they be doing. That bitch kinky and stanky, huh? Bitch got 10 dick slides in her. Just delete the whole page and now that she don't got to put up none of them niggas. That bitch got a whole pack of uh, B. Franks huh, on the side, huh? God damn. That bitch throwing dicks in her mouth like a <laughs> sausage eating contest, huh? God damn. Oh, man, this dude well, listen, crazy. man. Shout out to... um. Everybody who support us every week. Man. Everybody. We truly appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Um, when y'all get some time, if you want a million dollars worth of game shirt, make sure you check out the website. It's going to pop up right there. For the people that's listening on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, all of that. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. What's the website, Wallo? M Worth of Game. So that's Dot M. Com. That's M W O R T H. O F game. So you know dot com. And when you get the and when you pick up some of the merch off the website, man, do a short video and send it to me, man. DM it to me to my Instagram. I, I love to show love back to the people that support us. I would like to post the people up who buy our shirts, who buy our hats, who buy our mugs. You whatever forgot to you say buy. me though. You forgot to say me when you were saying anybody to put people on. I put you on. Yeah, you did. But why you ain't say me when you said all them you Rick did. Ross and all them? No, but you but you ain't really put me on. You just told me I had talent to rap because I wasn't a rapper. I was a robber. It was a difference. And you told me I had talent to rap, but then you went to jail. You was a rapper acting like a robber. No, I was a robber acting like a rapper. It only and matter. you was a booster. No, you was a you was a rapper acting like a booster. 
I was a thief. You was a petty thief too. You know what I mean? I was you, a petty. You was petty. You, Rick Low, Doug Low, Jug Low. I was petty. Uh, fucking, all, these all these niggas, all these niggas' name was Low. What was, was it? Petty. Hold on. Let name Hold all on. Did you just put Rick Low out there? Yes. <laughs> name all the Lows. Oh, we was Rick petty. Low, Wild Low. He's running around with shots. Hold on. Hold on. Doug Low, Jug Low. Name all the Lows. PM Low. Come on, Ronnie Low, Bobby Low, Ricky Low, Ralph Low. Gilly Low. <laughs> I wasn't no fucking Low. When I came around, them niggas was. Them niggas used to go to, to the gallery and steal all the guest jeans and the polo shirts. One thing about Wallow, though, nigga was super fresh from the, from the time he was 10. Nigga was stealing from the time he was 10 years old. Nigga got banned from the gallery and everything. I wonder when, yes, the, yeah. I wonder when the, gallery, the new gallery opened up in about two more months. Are you allowed in there? Because you got banned from the gallery yeah, back in the day. I was a kid, man. I wonder if they still got your picture in that motherfucker. I was a kid. Huh? Wallow used to go in there, right? Let me do, before we leave, right? Wallow was a master thief. I used to sleep in there. Sleep in department right. stores and leave, in, leave out the exit. Like when it closed, you sleep. You know, this before they had the sensors in there. So I go in there, hide under the rack, <laughs> bag a whole section <clears throat> up, hit the joint. Me and Rick Lowe, Rick Lowe had a door on the side. We had, we had a, uh, the van. Poof, poof, come on, we got to go. We get... Hold <laughs> on, Rick Lowe, Rick Lowe? Yes. Yeah. Party why, Rick Lowe? Why you Party. think all them niggas' name is Lowe? What do you mean? We name see. all the Lowe's, man, yeah. one time. Oh, yeah. Yo. Hey, Yo. I don't no, want to criminate well, nobody. He, well, listen, he showed me. He was the first nigga that showed me. He would go get a, 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 a like a shopping bag from a, a Lizzie store, bag. right? And then he would. Oh, you putting people information? Listen, out there. he would line the inside of the bag, right, with fucking aluminum foil, because when you line the inside of the bag with aluminum foil, the sensors don't go off. Oh my god, you was on some fucking Mission Impossible type right. shit. He this would go the in 90s. the store. He would go in the store, right. Take all the polo shoes off, shirts off the rack and dump them into the bag. Boom. All the guest jeans, pencil the bag pocket was joints. Big as shit. Pencil pocket joints. He had dump all of them into the joint and then walk out the store. Walk right through the alarm. The shit wouldn't go home. Then he'd go home and bite the sensors off with his teeth. <laughs> Lying. <laughs> and then go sell them joints all in the hood. Polo shirts. He lied. Yes, jeans. He lied. Polo shirts. He's a nut. He's lying. We, yes, used to, we used to come from Camden, come over Philly and buy shit. I wonder if I bought some. Yes, I wonder if I bought some shit. He was, buying, he was buying them off the lose. You used to sell watches and shit too. No, Tag cures. No, he only used to steal. He only steal. <laughs> Listen, I was in jail when you was coming over there. <laughs> he only used to steal polo shirts and cash jeans. Well, you might. You and Def the same age. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm talking about like 15, 16, 17. I was 17. I was in the penitentiary. Oh, yeah. yeah. Stories from a but, cell. But that's how he got his name Wallo, because he was a polo shirt stealer. <laughs> Million dollars. Appreciate y'all tapping in. This is Gilly the King. This is Wallo two six seven, aka Grandmaster of all nut ass niggas, and it's just like that, right?